Survival in a life or death emergency is often determined by decisions people make who don't even know the victim. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of people around the world in unusual danger and extraordinary efforts to save them on Rescue 911. We begin on a cool and cloudy day at a small airport outside Portland, Oregon. Most of the footage in the story was taped as events unfolded on June 15th, 1991. Stunt pilot Jim Franklin is a legend in the world of air shows. For eight months, he had been rehearsing a difficult new stunt with wing walker Lee Oman. At the Rose Festival Air Show, 40,000 people would see it. We know there's certain risk involved, and especially before a new stunt. And we talk about what can go wrong and what are we going to do if it does then. I don't care who you are, how good you are, sooner or later, if it can happen, it will happen. Hark back to the barn storming days of air shows. From Rio Doso, New Mexico. At the controls of the Waco, Jimmy Franklin from Mount Hole, Idaho. Lee Oma. Lee said to me, he says, Bill, he says, wait to see my new act. Airplane mechanics Bill Amarata and Mike Warren were in the staging area. I says, I wouldn't miss it for nothing. I said, I'll be right up there in the hill. Basic speeds in excess of 180 miles an hour and forces of six times that of gravity. Oldman will do his routine to loops, rolls, and hammerheads. He's one of the most incredible pilots I've ever seen. The guy just wears an airplane. He doesn't fly it. The weather conditions weren't very good. Uh, we had rain squalls, a little bit of wind, and for Jim up there, I'm sure it was pretty bumpy. Because Lee Oldman is making a move. Where do you suppose Lee is going to go? On the ground, pilot Michael Wiggins stopped working on his plane to watch Jim and Lee's new stunt. There's not many air show acts that I run up front to see because I'm usually busy with my own airplane and my own act, but uh, it's always exciting. A good friend of Lee's, Bob LaFrance, had traveled more than 1,400 miles to see his show. It was incredible. I mean, this is the first time I had ever seen it, and I don't know that anybody's ever even done that before, hung below the airplane. Now, if you were looking for a parachute, ain't got none. We've done the act in worse conditions as far as rough air. I was thinking that, uh, boy, that's, that's a lot of wind blast because he was being directed backwards by the wind and it was taking a lot of strength. They hit this bump and all of a sudden he was at the end of the cable. Well, the invisible wires come into play, I guess. I knew immediately it was not part of the act. And I also knew that Jimmy can't land that airplane with Lee hanging down below there without doing bodily harm to Lee. When we continue. My major concern was gas, because Jimmy had been up there for quite a while, and an airshow performer doesn't carry too much extra fuel. Lee Oman was bumped loose during an aerial stunt. He was left dangling below the plane from a slender cable. At 80 miles an hour, the wind was so strong, he could not pull himself up to safety. And the pilot could not land while he was hanging beneath the wheels. Wing walker turn. Wing walker, are you on? Is there a problem? Uh, yeah, we're going to take a little bit here. You can let us know if there's anything that we can do. I have a window in the belly of the airplane. You know, I can see, obviously, his arms, legs, everything's working okay. We don't do anything without an escape route or a back door, so to speak. The key to survival in this business. And uh, if I didn't get it done soon, then he may become so exhausted that he can't help me to get him back up. The first thing we had planned on was a negative G push where I would push the airplane over uh, 
and uh, it'd create a negative G and cause him to float up to the belly of the airplane. Where Lee came up to the airplane, there was no handles and he couldn't get a hold of anything, so he fell back down. Jimmy Franklin making an adjustment up there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to be as gentle with him as I could. And this time, I kicked the rudder on the airplane, got the tail to swinging, which in turn got him to swinging back and forth so that he'd actually come up to the side of the fuselage. Didn't make it. My major concern was gas, because Jimmy had been up there for quite a while, and an airshow performer doesn't carry too much extra fuel. Way more turn. Go ahead. Okay, we can get another Stearman airborne if you think that'll work. It'll be Bud Grantley in the Stearman. Negative. Uh, I don't think they can help. Could we use a pickup, possibly? Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get a truck out there. Okay, we'll do it. We've got uh, our expert people attempting uh, to come up with the right solution to this rescue problem. Bud said that he had... Uh, done a pickup truck to the airplane transfer before with Jim Franklin flying. So it was decided he was going to drive, and because I knew the harness and, and uh, where everything was, that I would cut the harness. As I said, the speed of the airplane will, uh, and the pickup will have to be matched precisely. It was kind of like doing a stunt that nobody's done before, except we had no time to practice. I get a, a good sharp knife and have the guy in the back of the pickup this thing when we get him in. You got it. Make it fast. We had to get it done within the length of the runway because the truck obviously had to stop at the end. The serious what if is what if we cut the cable halfway through and Jimmy had to take him around again and now he's only got a half a cable. Lee had already been buffeted for more than 15 minutes in wind chill temperatures below freezing. He was really getting weak in the air. You could tell by the way he was turning and and twisting in the wind. So I was really worried that Lee wasn't gonna be able to provide virtually any help at all in the rescue. I had a radio in my hand, so that naturally made me the shotgun guy in the other vehicle, and I was gonna call height and speed and maybe direction if we needed it. We're gonna have two vehicles, one beside the other, and that way you can look out the side of the airplane to gauge uh, your speed. That's good. Uh, Michael, let's hurry as much as you can. We have uh, people in the back of the truck to grab a hold of him. Affirmative, we do have personnel, is that correct? Okay. I'm going to be indicating about 65 to 70 miles an hour. Okay, uh, rescue trucks, did you copy? You got it. I was just worried that we weren't going to be able to pull it off. Being able to match the speeds of the airplane and the vehicles on the runway, that's a very difficult thing to do. Jimmy Franklin came down in the Waco, just virtually on the edge of a stall. Are we ready? We're ready. Okay, start rolling. Start rolling. got a hold of Lee and just has this big bear hug on him and <laughs> so I leaned over and I grabbed Lee's shoulder I said Lee you okay and he said yeah but I can't move I felt uh, just real ecstatic I like, hey I'm I'm here uh, I'm alive feel good because of his safety cable and the skill and ingenuity of his friends Lee Oman escaped without any injuries Good job.
friends and this incident is uh has added something to it and we're even closer now was that a show or what <laughs> something else man we went back to the drawing board and drew up some new safety devices and they're in place now and we're doing things now that make uh, that hanging down on the bar look, look simple In, in the air is uh, where I feel most comfortable at. It's the best seat in the house. It's the greatest thing there is. <laughs> 